Corinth Canal. People of the world must go and witness the engineering marvel of the Corinth Canal in Greece. This narrow canal, carved through rock, is a stunning feat that connects the Aegean Sea to the Ionian Sea. From tourism point of view, it is perfect for cruises, photography, and experiencing the grandeur of is an artificial canal in Greece that connects the Gulf of Corinth in the Ionian Sea with the Saronic Gulf in the Aegean Sea. It cuts through the narrow isthmus of Corinth and separates the Peloponnese from the Greek mainland, making the peninsula an island. The canal was dug through the isthmus at sea level and has no locks. It is 6.4 kilometers, that is 4 miles, in length and only 24.6 meters, that is 80.7 feet wide at sea level, making it impassable for many modern ships. It is currently of little economic importance and is mainly a tourist attraction. The Corinth Canal concept originated with Periander of Corinth in the 7th century BC. Daunted by its enormity, he chose to implement the Dialkos, a land trackway for transporting ships, instead. Construction of a canal finally began under Roman Emperor Nero in 67 AD, using Jewish prisoners captured during the First Jewish-Roman War. However, the project ceased shortly after his death. In subsequent centuries, the idea intrigued figures like Herod's Atticus in the 2nd century and, following their conquest of the Peloponnese in 1687, the Venetians. Despite their interest, neither of them undertook the construction. Construction finally recommenced in 1881 but was hampered by geological and financial problems that bankrupted the original building. It was completed in 1893, but, due to the canal's narrowness, navigational problems, and periodic closures to repair landslides from its steep walls, it failed to attract the level of traffic expected by its operators. The historical background of the Corinth Canal. Ancient attempts of construction of the canal. Several rulers of antiquity dreamed of digging and cutting through the isthmus. The first to propose such an undertaking was the tyrant, Periander in the 7th century BC. The project was abandoned and Periander instead constructed a simpler and less costly overland portage road, named the Dial Cos or Stone Carriageway, along which ships could be towed from one side of the isthmus to the other. Periander's change of heart is attributed variously to the great expense of the project, a lack of labor or a fear that a canal would have robbed Corinth of its dominant role as an entrepot for goods. Remnants of the dial cost still exist next to the modern canal. The diadoc Demetrius Poliusitz 336-83 BC planned to construct a canal as a means to improve his communication lines, but dropped the plan after his surveyors, miscalculating the levels of the adjacent seas, feared heavy floods. The philosopher Apollonius of Tiana prophesied that anyone who proposed to dig a Corinthian canal would be met with illness. Three Roman rulers considered the idea but all suffered violent deaths. The historians Plutarch and Suetonius both wrote that the Roman dictator Julius Caesar considered digging a canal through the isthmus but was assassinated before he could begin the project. Caligula, the third Roman emperor, commissioned a study in 40 AD from Egyptian experts who claimed incorrectly that the Corinthian Gulf was higher than the Saronic Gulf. As a result, they concluded, if a canal were dug the island of Aegina would be inundated. Caligula's interest in the idea got no further as he too was assassinated before making any progress. The Emperor Nero was the first to attempt to construct the canal, personally breaking the ground with a pickaxe and removing the first basket load of soil. In 67 AD, but the project was abandoned when he died shortly afterwards. The Roman workforce, consisting of 6,000 Juden prisoners of war, started digging 40 to 50 meter wide, that is 130 to 160 feet trenches from both sides, while a third group at the ridge drilled deep shafts for probing the quality of the rock which were reused in 1881 for the same purpose. 
According to Suetonius, the canal was dug to a distance of four stades, approximately 700 meters, that is 2,300 feet, or about a tenth of the total distance across the isthmus. A memorial of the attempt in the form of a relief of Hercules was left by Nero's workers and can still be seen in the canal cutting today. Other than this, as the modern canal follows the same course as Nero's, no remains have survived. The Greek philosopher and Roman senator Herodes Atticus is known to have considered digging a canal in the 2nd century AD, but did not get a project underway. The Venetians also considered it in 1687 after their conquest of the Peloponnese but likewise did not initiate any work on the ground. Construction of the modern canal. The idea of a canal was revived after Greece gained formal independence. The Greek statesman Ioannis Kapodistrias asked a French engineer to assess the feasibility of the project but had to abandon it when its cost was assessed at 40 million gold francs, far too expensive for the newly independent country. Fresh impetus was given by the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869, and, the following year, the government of Prime Minister Thrasivoulos Simus passed a law authorizing the construction of a Corinth Canal. French entrepreneurs were put in charge but, following the bankruptcy of the French company that had attempted to dig the Panama Canal, French banks refused to lend money, and the company went bankrupt as well. A fresh concession was granted to the Société Internationale du Canal Maritime de Corinth in 1881, which was commissioned to construct the canal and operate it for the next 99 years. Construction was formally inaugurated on 23 April 1882 in the presence of King George I of Greece. The company's initial capital was 30 million francs that is 6 million United States dollars in the money of the day, but after eight years of work, it ran out of money, and a bid to issue 60,000 bonds of 500 francs each flopped when less than half of the bonds were sold. The company's head, Istvan Ter, went bankrupt, as did the company itself and a bank that had agreed to raise additional funds for the project. Construction resumed in 1890, when the project was transferred to a Greek company, and was completed on 25 July 1893 after 11 years' work. After completion of the construction of the Corinth Canal, the canal experienced financial and operational difficulties after completion. The narrowness of the canal makes navigation difficult. Its high walls funnel wind along its length, and the different times of the tides in the two gulfs cause strong tidal currents in the channel. For these reasons, many ship operators were unwilling to use the canal, and traffic was far below predictions. Annual traffic of just under 4 million net tons had been anticipated, but by 1906 traffic had reached only half a million net tons annually. By 1913, the total had risen to 1.5 million net tons, but the disruption caused by World War I resulted in Another persistent problem was the heavily faulted nature of the sedimentary rock in an active seismic zone through which the canal is cut. The canal's high limestone walls have been persistently unstable from the start. Although it was formally opened in July 1893 it was not open to navigation until the following November, due to landslides. It was soon found that the wake from ships passing through the canal undermined the walls, causing further landslides. This required further expense in building retaining walls along the water's edge for more than half of the length of the canal, using 165,000 cubic meters of masonry. Between 1893 and 1940, it was closed for a total of four years for maintenance to stabilize the walls. In 1923 alone, 41,000 cubic meters of material fell into the canal, which took two years to clear out. Serious damage was caused to the canal during World War II. During the Battle of Greece between defending Allied troops and the invading forces of Nazi Germany, 
German parachutists and glided troops attempted to capture the main bridge over the canal. The bridge was defended by British and Anzac forces and had been wired for demolition. The Germans surprised the defenders with a glider-borne assault in the early morning of 26 April and captured the bridge, but the British set off the charges and destroyed the structure. Other authors maintain that German pioneers cut the detonation wires, and a lucky hit by British artillery triggered the explosion, or that they were set off by a rifle shot from one of the British sappers. The bridge was replaced by a combined rail road bridge built in 25 days by the IV Ferroviari Battalion of the Royal Italian Army's Ferroviari Engineer Regiment. Three years later, as German forces retreated from Greece, the canal was put out of action by German scorched earth operations. German forces used explosives to block the canal, destroyed the bridges and dumped locomotives bridge wreckage and other infrastructure into the canal to hinder repairs. The United States Army Corps of Engineers began to clear the canal in November 1947 and reopened it for shallow draft traffic by 7 July 1948, and for all traffic by that September. Modern use. Because the canal is difficult to navigate for large vessels, it is mostly used by smaller recreational boats. A notable exception occurred on 9 October 2019, when the cruise ship MS Bremer became the widest and longest ship to transit the canal. The canal closed at the beginning of 2021 after a landslide. It reopened in June 2022 until October 2022. After further safety measures, the canal reopened on June 1, 2023. Layout of the Corinth Canal the canal consists of a single channel 8 meters that is 26 feet deep, excavated at sea level thus requiring no locks measuring 6,343 meters that is 20,810 feet long by 24.6 meters that is 81 feet wide at sea level and 21.3 meters that is 70 feet wide at the bottom. The rock walls, which rise 90 meters 300 feet above sea level, are at a near vertical 80 degrees angle. The canal is crossed by a railway line, a road and a motorway at a height of about 45 meters that is 148 feet. In 1988, submersible bridges were installed at sea level at each end of the canal, by the eastern harbor of Isthmia and the western harbor of Posidonia. Although the canal saves the 700 km that is 430 miles journey around the Peloponnese, it is too narrow for modern ocean freighters, as it can accommodate ships only of a width up to 17.6 meters that is 58 feet and draft up to 7.3 meters that is 24 feet. In October 2019, with over 900 passengers on board, a 22.5 meters that is 74 feet wide and 195 meters that is 640 feet long Fred. Olsen Cruise Lines cruise ship successfully traversed the canal to set a new record for longest ship to pass through the canal. Ships can pass through the canal only one convoy at a time almost like the Panama Canal on a one-way system. Larger ships have to be towed by tugs. The canal is currently used mainly by tourist ships. Around 11,000 ships per year travel through the waterway. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Kindly subscribe to Dundee 1 TV. Leave your comments, like and share video.